Hello everyone. Today is May 11th, 2022. We are again uh, on Natural Pigment Studio. My name is Tatiana Zaitseva and I am assisted by George O'Hanlon who is behind the camera and he will definitely help me today talk about the apparently very interesting topic for you. It's glazing. And so uh, you probably noticed we uh, we kind of hurry up because uh, we we usually have um, um, artist material advisor once a month. This time we decided to do twice because we have a lot of mediums to cover and we designated May, months of May specifically to that topic. So I just want to remind you today we will talk about three mediums. It's olio gel, Venetian medium and uh, Italian varnish. Next uh, AMA, which will be on May 25th, and uh, so we will talk about uh, uh, epoxide oil gel, walnut oil gel, and uh, olio res gel, and another one, Wilson's medium, so uh, we specifically will talk about what the difference between them, and uh, let's start today. And uh, it will be short videos, like always, and so George and I will, will answer your questions immediately right uh, on the right side of your screen, and we will read and answer. Thank you. One way Venetian artists developed color in their paintings was to apply multiple thin translucent layers that blend color in luminous, vibrant ways. The contemporary author Giovanni Lamazzo described it in his treatise as painting transparently. This method of painting relies on being able to paint translucently, smoothly, and thinly. Glazing relies on creating transparent paint layers which contrasts with the opacity of pigments. Venetian artists' innovative use of materials help them to achieve transparent paint in ways more remarkable and complex than previously imagined. Giovanni Bellini was an innovative painter throughout the length of his career. He adopted materials and colors that not only enriched, but also defined the Venetian palette. Rather than mixing two opaque pigments, such as orpiment and realgar, to achieve Silenus orange throbe in this picture of the Feast of the Gods, Bellini painted it with orpiment mixed with a transparent red lake pigment. Bellini mixed a yellow glass material of the type used by ceramic decorators into azurite to achieve the perfect hue for suggesting hills at the horizon in the far distant. Bellini added transparent red pigment into a green copper resonant glaze to mute the intensity of its tone and to strike just the right color in Priapus tunic. The variety of material available in Venetian color shops promoted or prompted researchers, barbarian Luisa Matthew of the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.D.C., to consider evidence of non-pigmentary materials in the painting practice of Venetian artists. Their research led them to the remarkable use of materials, as in this painting of St. Catherine by Lorenzo Lotto in the National Gallery of Art. A cross-section from St. Catherine's sleeve shows the complicated layering Lotto used to create this color. What they found is silica. The presence of silica is unexpected, and this occurrence appears to be the first finding of this material used by Italian Renaissance painters as an extender to give body and oil paint. So we see the, the incredible use of different materials, not necessarily pigments, to create these transparent layers, these glazes, that created such a dynamic and beautiful color in their paintings. Well, we have the same thing today. We have innovative materials that we can use also in oil painting today. And that's the next subject that we're going to discuss. And I'll let Tatiana take over with that. 
Um, yeah, there is an opinion very often we hear that natural pigments follow the basically all historical, you know, uh, formulas. And it's true on some of them, yes. But uh, we definitely take in what makes sense and definitely don't, don't touch what doesn't. So um, Olio Jal, one of the actually modern, obviously, um, um, materials. And so Olio Jal, it's uh, just simply your linseed uh, oil. In this case, we take just simple um, refined linseed oil with fumed silica and I return a little bit later um, to that uh, formula. So you see that's Mars red. So where the small particles and just simple linseed oil uh, make that, that paint very sticky and, um, and very long. long. Yeah. Yes, very long. And so if you will take from the tube, it's almost impossible to paint. And we did this specifically that way because we thought that uh, uh, artists are will modify that color how they want and in this case um, we use an oleo gel and you can see how suddenly it's loosening up it's still long but at least it's um, uh, more manageable so again if you will return back to our previous uh, session where it was a couple of weeks ago so if you will mix this let's say with uh, velasquez medium that will give a uh, little bit different uh, appearance and a little bit uh, different look to that. And due to the small particles and, um, and specifically that specific oil, so you can see then it's very glossy paint. And um, as much as I'm added in here a lot of oleo gel, please, we uh, warn you, please don't use much. This is, uh, uh, again, we're showing you only two way how to dilute the paint. But a uh, little bit later when we will finish that session, I will uh, show you what happened if you add a lot of uh, oleo gel. So this is um, the comparison. We wanted to show you with very big particles and very small particles paint. So the, here is Venetian uh, red and it does have much bigger particles than let's say mars uh, red and um you can see those particles create that texture exactly, that you're seeing there exactly and even if you will add a lot of oleo gel it still will give matte appearance or let's put say let's say this matter than uh the than mars, mars red, red. Yeah. so the Again. unique mm -hmm. uh, the unique thing again about the oleo gel is the silica so this is but it's a modern form of silica unlike what they found in uh, lato's painting there so that's a very unique thing that um, uh, that we do in there now you can see this watches so where we uh, we're showing you it's mars red on the uh, left side and um, uh, oleo and the uh, venetian on right side so we did proportion four to one and you can see how so on the left side of mars red is completely opaque you can't even see the difference and so where in uh, venetian medium you uh, venetian red you can see little bit the transparency but still not enough and that really the, underscores the point mm -hmm. That if you're going to do glazing, you really don't want to use opaque colors. You want to use colors that are very definitely um, less opaque, such we, as an earth color. We could not scan to you. So we did on all other uh, mediums, we did uh, proportion uh, four to one, two. And I could not, uh, uh, we could not do oleo gel. And that's why I will show you later because it's still drying. Imagine a week later. And so... That's why I always warn uh, artists about how much you will use. So here's that one very interesting medium. It's called Italian varnish. And that's based definitely on what we were talking about, historical mediums. And uh, of course, George will talk a lot today about this because it looks like that specific medium created the most interest because we were talking about Marie Jean 
and uh, <clears throat> this is safer um, version of, of Marie and we will talk specifically about the, the formula but again uh, before George will come here to talk again so uh, here's Mars red and you can see how that again change in appearance and so uh, yes especially from uh, top camera you will see how suddenly that very dark um, particles of the Mars red suddenly become much lighter or brighter and uh, it just due to the uh, specific um, you know the the refractive index when you're changing the the oil and a little wet uh, wax here so okay George here we are we're doing with Venetian red and uh, same Italian varnish so this Italian varnish is based on a recipe from the early 19th century, Merimi, who was an artist, as, as well a, a very interesting individual that uh, cataloged and put together various uh, techniques or practices at the time. And so uh, this particular, uh, it's not really a varnish, it's a medium, but it was called Italian varnish. We kept the name and then we improved on the formulation. But this is, Italian varnish is definitely a McGilp or Marage type medium, except in our version of it, we remove the mastic resin, which is very problematic in, uh, in oil painting. So here uh, again, we, uh, now we can show you, uh, here's Mars red, uh, portion one to, to four to Italian varnish and uh, uh, four to one. And you can see with small particles, even if you put four parts of the medium, which uh, here in this case, it's Italian varnish. So it's still not transparent. So to achieve the transparency with uh, a very opaque, very powerful colors, it's double your time and double your effort. So that's, that's so it's, so it's self-defeating yes. to use opaque colors in glazes, and, yes. such as Mars Red or anything like that. And keep in mind, what you're looking at is a paint film that's spread at two mil, uh, mil yeah. or thousandths of an inch, which is about the width of human hair. But on another case, I mean, look this, Venetian Red. So when you uh, add four part again, don't try that. <laughs> but if we are talking about glazes, of course, uh, you know, in some cases, you would absolutely need to make this very transparent um, uh, layers. You can see the difference with big particles. Um, and um, and it's interesting for us was fi to find uh, out then with um, so same Venetian red, but with oleo gel, it still was more um, uh, more opaque than let's say let's see with Italian varnish. So Italian varnish gave more glass, and I will show you uh, later uh, the difference in glass and uh, um, and matteness between two different uh, colors. But here you can see that uh, the apparent um, the transparency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again uh, the differences. A little texture here due to the particle size of the Venetian red, and uh, but it's c clearly more transparent. Here is what I always, so now our classes every time say it's most romantic uh, medium we have. And so it's again, both of these mediums, uh, Italian varnish and Venetian medium based on black oil. And we will talk a little bit later about this. And again, it's historical um, material. And, um, and as much as we tell, tell you don't use a lot. So, uh, but we, two of these mediums based on specifically to, uh, on that um, uh, product. So again, mixing with, um, uh, with um, Mars Red, what the difference? You notice then how Italian varnish is very transparent, translucent, and so Venetian medium looks very white here. 
although once you mix with the uh, with the paint it will be completely transparent the white part of this it's glass it's um uh, this is very this of course based on what we know about uh, venetian painters who added glass just like we i mentioned earlier in this uh, in this episode that they use glass in their painting and this is why we we did this this medium with the glass and you can see again the the you it's hard to see a little bit the difference but there is a little bit difference in terms of the optical effect which you'll see a little bit in the drawdowns mm -hmm. but you can't see it that much here because again we're dealing with a very opaque paint but for the uh, part of the particles because um, um, George specifically um, this the glass what we sell we sell in um, in jars for you <clears throat> if you want to experiment uh, at, you know by yourself at home uh, you absolutely can the particles of the glass quite large so therefore uh, it was interesting to see on swatches where suddenly it was not as glossy as people would expect although refractive index of glass is uh, 1.52 and it must be quite transparent um, uh, on the on any paint you mix but for the fact of the big particles. So therefore, uh, you will see the, the surface a little bit of um, uh, given the madness. So here's uh, again, back to Mars, uh, to Venetian one to four. And again, that's, that's the Venetian medium. M Venetian medium, yeah. mm -hmm. yes. And uh, so Venetian medium, and you can see again, it's absolutely a peg. Does again, it... that's because of the Mars red. Yeah. Small Smaller particle particles. pigments and very opaque very uh, powerful yeah. uh, pigment again the difference here with the venetian medium and this time with the earth color venetian red and you can see on actually on both uh, sides although on right side not as um, as uh, apparent but you can see some transparency where on uh, on mars red you could not see any of that so the big difference is with oleo gel, you really can't use a lot because it'll never, it'll, it just won't it's, dry. Yeah. But with these other mediums, and we only recommend this very sparingly, they will dry, and uh, yes, at, oh, at higher concentrations yes, or yes. higher uh, higher proportions. And I will show a little bit, mm -hmm. like in in five minutes, I will show you the difference. So this is a measurement of gloss. And uh, based on the different proportions, let's say of Italian varnish, one part to Venetian red, four parts. And uh, the higher the number, these are called gloss units. And the higher the number, the more uh, gloss the, that particular mixture is. And, you, and of course, this is very logical that the, um, in this case, the Venetian, uh, when you have four parts of Italian, or if you have a greater proportion of, of the varnish, it's going to give more gloss. That's just a natural outcome of that. And again, you can see the Venetian, no, actually, this is typed in wrong. This is supposed to be Venetian var, var, uh, medium. Uh, so Venetian medium, one part, Venetian red, four parts. And you can see the glosses uh, considerably less than uh, than that of the Italian varnish, and that, like Tanya mentioned, has to do with the um, the particles Particle size. of the glass. Uh, this slide we brought specifically <clears throat> to uh, to for you to understand the difference uh, uh, from previous sessions. So, because we were talking about impasta medium, Velasquez medium, so we wanted you to see how. Uh, with same viridian will look like if, if you are interested on again it's about glazing but a little bit more safer way uh, that's what we explained you uh, last time in uh, previous session so but here's with Italian varnish and you can see the difference here so it's uh, it's again two mil on right side and six mil on uh, on left side and um, you can see the transparency 
and um, please don't paint uh, six mils so <laughs> very thick if but, you're glazing but of course yeah it does no. dry faster than oleo gel no. and uh, it does dry faster than uh, let's say Velasquez medium um, but the downside of both of mediums what we are talking today it uh, both of them have um, inside turpentine which George actually now thinks then we should introduce new mediums without any solvents because the interest of artists are so uh, big right now on that um, on that two specific mediums so but we are as a company always promote the less usage of the solvents and um, look like we will come up with new mediums uh, solvent free for uh, for that uh, two mediums italian and uh, venetian so here you can see um, look at this italian varnish uh, four parts to viridian one and uh, unbelievable so you can see how that that makes transparent and uh, although of course the viridian of transparent color as it is it's uh, you less can't... less opaque than Mars yeah. red. Yes. Yeah, yes. For sure. And yeah. so and and you can see again by applying the color thinly, you get more transparency. And, and by that's the way, really the, yeah. that's really the way to go with glazes. And drying time was here uh, almost faster. yeah, yeah. almost uh, instant uh, on yeah. where on two meals. Mm -hmm. So here's Venetian medium. Uh, one part of Venetian medium to four parts of um, uh, Viridian. And you can see then again on six meals, it's quite a peg. Where on um, Venetian medium, four parts is, uh, you can see how the, what the uh, big difference. And always important to paint thinly if you're going to do varnishing. It'll dry faster. It'll be a much better... Uh, results from that. We we felt like we needed to mention to you because um, uh, black oil we make here every time. Like it's we probably like we are making probably like once in uh, uh, in months, and every time it's different. It depends. It's like not every time it's different, but it's. Uh, there will be differences because of the temperature, in, yeah. how we cook it, because it's you know humans and so, so uh, and based on that black oil, how it's if it's blacker, it's a little bit you know darker uh, on on both of these mediums, and so we don't want you to be a lord. So if you if you will see your medium is a little bit more yellow than than one before. It's, it does mean then, uh, or we uh, cook a little bit longer because uh, we do need to wait until uh, lethargy will completely dissolve. And again, we will return to this specific um, idea a little bit later because uh, George will talk about how we cook it and uh, how long it's supposed to do because you read so many um, different books and you uh, make um, uh, wrong ideas actually uh, and uh, it's um, a lot of books may I, I don't think then they they make you to confuse but <laughs> but very often we we do hear you call us and you ask oh how long I should cook it or how much lethargy I, I should put and so and uh, uh, I, I know you will read the article George wrote about this. And so then the original recipe was calling to one third of the, uh, the lead. And uh, we find then it's absolutely not necessary, uh, not needed. And um, that's why we every time trying to put as less as possible, but still to, um, to have the same ability for black oil to have that that incredible uh, feel to that. That's what was attracted to many artists. Since you showed that, uh, since we showed that those colors, do you have those uh, swatches? Yes. Why don't we? Yes, let, let's do that. So 
Um, I that... mean, uh, if the ones with the different. Um, oh yes, yeah. yes, yes. I'm sorry. I, since, I miss, since we I ended with you... that, I think it would be good I to miss, show that. Yes. Now. So um, here again, it's very. I I hope you. Trust so the color me so difference between see. the what you just saw, so, yeah. some of the variability in color due to the cooking process of the black oil, actually results in almost no color difference. As you can see, because you can, that's the I, Italian varnish. Yes. Yeah, so let, let of me the two explain. Yeah, yeah. So the darkest one on Italian varnish, I put on uh, again. It's two meals. I I did specific uh, uh, spread here. So, and here was um, um, older one, and here was the our latest batch, and uh, and of course on glass you can see that there are no difference in uh, in glass. You can see a little bit, maybe slight slightly yeah. uh, slight different in color, but again, it's absolutely like you know if you just will specifically look for that. And uh, here I did Venetian medium, and again, this is old um, batch of uh, Venetian medium, and this is new one, and uh, you can see again there uh, basically no difference in the color. So. Um, Again, every time we use don't uh, tell don't use a lot of mediums and uh, what I notice right here. So again, just because of the property of that mediums, it's attract a lot of uh, dust. And uh, so if you, which we hear that often too. So if you have um, you have studio where it's a lot of dust, so um, always. Um, Keep in mind then it will attract the uh, more mediums you use will attract uh, paint. I mean uh, dust. So um, now let's let's go back to our swatches. And so I will show you the difference in uh, in glass and in transparency. So that's where we can see Mars red and oleo gel uh, uh, one part and. Um, so this this is what it's six meals, although I probably should not just touch. Which it. Can like, compare with two, the Venetian, yeah. yeah. And here's Venetian, and you can see so the glass is different. You can see that, and, um, and and that's largely a result of the paint, not the medium. Yes. So always keep that in mind. Less gloss always results from bigger particle size pigments. So where I did the oleo gel four parts, and uh, I can tell you, so you see the, the, the time, so then uh, I did on May 4th, all of the swatches, and this is still not dry even. So, and it's, uh, I'm, it's you, way you too much. See, yeah, you yeah. can see then every day I come in and every day I touch and it's still, still wet. So please be conscious about how much medium you use. So um, here's um, here's I have uh, Mars red, and I I probably with Italian uh, with Italian varnish. So Mars red Italian varnish and Venetian medium, and you can see the difference here. That's that's very apparent. It's four parts of the medium and the glass is here definitely and uh, this is one part of Italian varnish and um, and you can see how uh, a peg on Mars and Venetian red is quite transparent so again here's um, one part of let me since I'm doing Mars on left side, so here's uh, Venetian medium, and uh, you can see it's less gloss than let's say is in Italian. Look at that. And that's due to the particle, particle of the size, glass. Yes, and this. So when you paint, <laughs> obviously. Uh, take uh, everything to consideration the particle size the how much oil you use and what 
specific medium you use so then and this is the four parts of Venetian medium to to the paint both paints and you will see how easy to make transparent layers uh, with the bigger particles paint okay so um, this is what about swatches and now we uh, we I, I feel like we need to return back to uh, to explanation what is Italian varnish and uh, uh, and uh, I will show you it's based on black oil which we do sell we do sell that too and as much as we are saying then please don't use a lot uh, because of, due to the t uh, color you see it start already as a dark color so therefore uh, be careful with uh, light color paint uh, especially with white it will uh, definitely make that look um, more yellow and but because of the historical formulas of um, uh, formula of the Marige and so and or Italian varnish so we um, we use the same um, same product, black oil, and and a little bit of wax in the. So I put in the uh, comments. I put the links to two articles which go into much more detail than we can do here about the the uh, historical basis of all these mediums, the Venetians, as well as the Italian varnish. But the Italian varnish, let's speak about that just for a moment, what Tanya mentioned was that it, uh, it is based on black oil, but the black oil in the original recipe was, as Tanya mentioned, 33% uh, of, of the oil. So that's an excessive amount. Um, you can dissolve quite a bit of litharge into oil, but to do so, you have to cook the oil much longer. This results in much darker color. So in and in effective to affect the drying time uh, you only need one percent at the most so what we did is just reduce the amount of uh, of the litharge to get what essentially was the unique characteristics of that particular medium without achieving such dark color and uh, so that's how we did that and then of course Instead of using uh, beeswax, which is what they recommended, we used a different wax in a much smaller amount uh, than what was recommended. So that, those are improvements to the original medium that we thought were very effective. Do we have questions? So Here's because, one here yeah. from Alan uh, Berkman. Do you recommend when glazing to put down the paint and then wipe it or brush it off? I think that's called staining in order to get the thinnest possible layer, or is that not necessary? You know, that's the uh, my fear always uh, to say that's right or that's not because every uh, every artist is different and uh, every each of you uh, using different techniques, and through history it was used different, and so it's um, uh, I. I, in, but in order to get the greatest transparency and yet not use too much medium, which is not structurally sound for a painting. Just use the very thin layer so of the paint So apply it very thinly. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's a, good, uh, you know, a, a, good a good practice to follow. Yes. So Mark asks, uh, comparing these two glazing mediums, is it ideal to use each one with different color temperature glazes? One better with warmer colors, the other with cooler. In practice, it really I, didn't know. didn't make much difference yes. in the colors that we saw. So it it uh, I the, the the use of either medium is simply a pre personal preference. Uh, we always uh, say then we learn as much as you learn from us. We learn from you because um, uh, you know even your request to make this uh, AMA specifically for glazing, uh, it, it show us a lot. Although we every time say, don't put uh, a four, uh, like a lot of four, 50-50 even, it's too much for the uh, mediums. And uh, now to make that and show see then week later, it's still not dried. It's our, you know, um, confession to you, like, please, like, 
it's great medium but don't use a lot and so and especially when you see all of them together you see then they on rank of the the transparency you can achieve with one or another it's just you will see the difference in uh, in drying time and uh and definitely like with venetian it will be a little bit more um, um what is it it's actually boosted color but not as gloss and so same like you will see like with uh, velasquez medium so it's kind of like if you will put one to one together like venetian and velasquez medium um it's um it will be very similar but with velasquez it's a little bit more um i would think than more safer yes because of the no black oil no turpentine and um it's it's one of the paste mediums is what we're distinguishing from last our last yes. AMA and these are gel mediums. Yes. So there's a distinction has to do with the solid content. Yes. And although the Venetian medium has, has glass. glass in it, it's it's not technically a paste medium, although yes. it, it it kind be, of acts. Yes. Yes. Kind yeah. of both like yeah. that, yeah. But the the fact that uh, Venetian medium has a uh, solvent that's that's, uh, that's, ple that's please a, be careful if you yes. And it dries much faster. Yes. Sanjita, hi Sanjita. Is there a way to know what the particle size of a particular pigment is? Absolutely. So on our website, so when you go to uh, let's say about paint. So, um, and again, remember, we have several lines of uh, products in our uh, uh, company. So if it's Venetian red, it could be pigment, dispersion, oil color, watercolor. So uh, then what you will do, so you, uh, you, if you, let's say, oil painter, you go to Venetian pigment. Um, I mean, hopefully one day we will have time to put everywhere, but on, uh, if, if it's Venetian red oil, you can just go to Venetian red pigment and there we have all information. And then uh, oil paint, almost all of them, we have absorption rate, so you know how much oil you use. It's all information there. Let me see, go here. Oh, and by the way, uh, Sanjita, in, in regards to that too, it's um, uh, most of the earth pigments are going to have larger particles. particle size. So, and synthetic pigments will all be very, very small. We have, so that, that's just a clear guideline right there, rule of thumb. Yeah, so uh, if kind of like, uh, since, since you're watching this, and so I can tell you this, you will take all our French pigments, they all have the probably the biggest particles, and plus they have silicon naturally. It's just because where they dig the, uh, on. So where, like, let's say our Blue Ridge Mountains and um, uh, Blue Ridge Hematite, Blue Ridge Yellow Ochre, they have smaller particles. And so, and Italian pigments and Russian pigments are somewhere in between. So you can read all that information. So Alberto asks, do you recommend using these mediums exclusively for glazing or can they be used to amend paint in general? So this is a good question because again, um, when you look all your gel, and again, when I specifically mentioned then uh, more medium you use, it's not drying and it's sticky. And so obviously you don't want to use on the very lower, um, lower layers of the painting because you definitely will uh, throw away the, the uh, rule fat over lean, which we don't tell you even uh, follow, but so where Italian varnish probably could be used again on all over the, the, the painting uh, because it does dry faster. Uh, it does have, uh, you know, ability to, to make the uh, layers transparent. Where Venetian medium, and I do know artists are using again all over the, the painting um, because of the, how they like, how it's feel, how it's look like. But think about it. Uh, it does have a glass particles where it must have uh, the glass has uh, uh, different uh, um, uh, refractive index than let's say any other paint you have. Why you would why would you want to put on first layers uh, of the painting? Because 
uh, you will know you will lose all that great um, abilities of that specific medium and plus it's a little bit more expensive than uh, any other medium so that i would suggest for you again go back to to our paste mediums and uh, start with them if you do need uh, for you know transparency from the very bottom to the top so uh, paint with velasquez and impasta medium if, uh, if you need but very top layers use already like uh, italian varnish and um, and uh, Velas uh, the um, venetian medium olio gel is a little bit more uh, people attracted to that and uh, we do know uh, it's uh, uh, people addicted to that too so but just judge by yourself so derek asked virgil elliott mentioned in a podcast that he uses mars colors instead of umbers or ochre he claimed that those earth colors due to clay content may cause cracking down the road. How true is that? So I can, I, can, I can answer that yeah. pretty succinctly. First of all, uh, the clay does make the paint film more sensitive to climatic changes. Yes. So as a result of uh, the uh, hygroscopic nature of clay, it will... Uh, it, it will it go through more expansion contraction. However, when you look at the old master paintings, they're predominantly earth pigments. And the concern that the cracking, I think, is minimal. It can occur, but also keep in mind that without the benefit of lead white, which kind of what I call forgives all sins, uh, it, you know, you, most of your paint colors are mixed with lead white because white is the predominant color in any painting. And hence, it actually compensates. And that's what we see in the old master paintings. It's compensating for the issues of earth colors. However, that's a preference that some artists have. And you can see that in order to achieve transparency with a Mars color is actually very difficult. I mean, um, Virgil is our oldest friend of our, uh, of our company. And uh, so, and we always follow like, you know, what, what Virgil loves or doesn't like. And so why, it is why uh, two of our specific colors just designated to him because we, um, we, usually don't introduce new colors we try to stay with you know as less uh, colors as possible but mars brown and chromium oxide green was specifically created because um, uh, virgil loves this uh, colors and so uh, and in uh, back to to umbers and the most um, uh, with umbers what it's not even cracking but the problem uh, usually people struggle it's sinking in because it, uh, umbers dry faster and then um, you know the wrong oil in the umbers uh, will give that appearance and so it's why in rublev colors we specifically mix on all our umbers we uh we mix with bodied oil so therefore they don't sink as much and they don't give you as many problems but due to uh, to that and so we have uh, here's in um, uh, in our studios we uh, started make a lot of um, um, uh, testing because of the um, because you are interested guys you're writing us and so we uh, we always uh, uh, looking for something else to so spoiler alert for next uh, uh, next AMA we will talk about specifically earth colors and how to make them transparent and so then uh, we will talk about uh, not only different gel mediums but uh, the specific about the uh, earth colors and including umbers and so if you are interested about this so please come. yeah well what we're, what we're going to show is how contrasting when you take a color like earth colors because it's more apparent and you make glazes with them as opposed to mixing with white. So we're going to show those yes. side by side and you can see the difference. It'll be very interesting uh, for artists to look at that, how they can modulate one color into many different hues. 
yeah or, or and uh, you tones need to of that. yeah and you need to remember if you are painting with mars colors it's um in synthetic it's synthetic um iron oxides and they have very small particles and so and uh it's very often very glossy surfaces and so that that kind of like again if you do like to uh, glossy surfaces that's one thing and um if if you don't so then uh bigger particles which is don't be afraid umbers and um it just you need to know how to uh, to use them cam asks i had purchased two bottles of black oil a few years ago were those made with the same formula as the current one? Absolutely. Uh, hi, Cam. So happy to see you here. Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, the uh, the black difference... oil we are making absolutely the same. All uh, uh, I think we're making like twelve years already. This yeah. uh, this and so the difference is like if it's. Um, if it's cold winter days, <laughs> so we probably spend a little bit longer outside because we are cooking outside. And uh, so, but so Cam, the same. Yeah. So Cam have to, what happens is the, the amount of litharge never changed. We yeah. always use the same formula. Yeah. The difference is, is sometimes because of the differences in oil, oil is a yeah. natural product. And that we and, notice too. And there will be slight differences and those differences cause us to cook longer or in sometimes shorter. And we try to always cook the minimum amount, but our, what we need to do is dissolve the litharge into the oil. Next uh, question. Uh, since you're looking for next uh, question, mm -hmm. I, I can tell you this. So, uh, for example, our sun, uh, sun thickened uh, linseed oil. Mm -hmm. And um, so when we started this, uh, you know, several, it's, uh, we did only few uh, batches. And so one batch, we started 2017. And uh, we just bottled that one because that one was without uh, lead strips. Because when we noticed two years later, that same batch, what we started in 2017, it was not thickening enough, even with our California sun. It's, uh, it was not happening. So we started new batch where we put the strips of the lead where the reaction was much faster. Although even that oil, although on the label we are writing, not less than three months. So our uh, the shortest time was two years for sun thickened uh, uh, linseed oils. So now we will have uh, new products. So where would be uh, sun thickened linseed oil without lead particles. So then now we come up with uh, with new product. So then uh, stay tuned. We will show you. Uh, we will uh, introduce that uh, probably next um, <clears throat> couple weeks. Can you use Italian and Venetian varnish within the same painting or uh, do you need to stick with one varnish or one medium? So good, uh, good question. So it's a very common question. So uh, you can mix mediums as much as you want because it's all based on linseed oil. The difference is please be careful if you don't pay attention to gloss. So then uh, it will it, you can come up with very uneven uh, surface, sheen on the surface. And, uh, and for some people, uh, it, it's no bother. Some people absolutely uh, freaking out on the end of the, the session, they see the, the passages. And it's not even about this medium specifically we are talking about if you using, let's say, bodied oil on certain areas of your painting. So um, there are no danger to use them together the danger only uh, how it's look like. And so, and another question, very common uh, to, to our uh, company, people so attractive, attracted to our mediums and they're saying, is it, does it work with other paint? And uh, the answer is yes. Of course, we uh, check and test only on our paint. We don't have any time to, uh, to do that with somebody else's paint. But that's why we are telling you every time, uh, doesn't matter what product you buy from us or from anybody else. If it's new to you, try first on your practice painting, then you understand how it's behave, how it works with uh, certain materials, what you are custom, and then only after that, make your masterpiece. 
Kind of an interesting question. Why is aluminum stearate bad? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's... Um, um, it's not bad. It's not bad. It is not bad. The problem now we're finding, uh, because it was used last, what, 80, 90 years? And um, so, but problem now museums are finding. And uh, so uh, the paint what uh, made with um, with additives because aluminum stearate is additive, and uh, in certain pieces of work, it's giving this um, unpredictable. It's a haze. Haze. So what? What's it, aluminum stearate, and which is one of the additives used commercially, magnesium stearate is another one, and uh, castor wax. Castor wax. Um, it has been related to certain defects in paintings, such as the haze, which is a fatty acid that forms, or fatty acid or fats that crystallize and form on the surface of paint layers. We know now you can absolutely wipe it, and then it will come day and it will appear again. Yeah. And it's just nuisance. It's, uh, uh, and again... And this is, this is a defect only with modern paints. Uh, it, they, they've never seen this kind of defect in, uh, let's say, the old master paints before uh, these kinds of additives were used uh, in, in commercial and paints. And if I understand correct, it's still not like exactly proven how it works, uh, but it's several uh, documents already, se several papers uh, out where it's specifically kind of like address the, the additives, including aluminum stearate and magnesium stearate. So for glazing, do you recommend always using a transparent paint or be judicious and think more about the paint's particle size? Uh, the thing is, transparent paint is almost always uh, has, uh, has bigger particles. Of course, I mean, I'm not Except talking for, about alizarin, for yeah. example. So alizarin, yeah. it's just forget it's, about it's this. It's not part. always a direct one-to-one -one relationship, yeah. but... Uh, but but yes, the, the, the key is to use uh, colors that are going to be, that, that basically are more transparent. That's just a much, and that's what we see easier. in old, old master paintings. They didn't use opaque colors for, uh, for glazing. Yes. Would you ever put the mineral from umber that makes it dry so fast into a medium? I mean, you can, but that means you will change the color. So uh, that's, is that, there, did I understand so correct? The, the uh, mineral that gives it the fast drying yeah. is manganese oxide. And indeed, that is used as a dryer in, uh, in oils. Yes. It's, for instance, Medium. manganese dryers are used in our pale drying oil. And, but, and it's very fast drying, but we don't put it in a medium. We try to avoid um, uh, act, what we call active or primary dryers in mediums because often if uh, individuals use them too much, they get too much drying and they get uh, alligatoring on the surface of the paint. Or cracking. So it's, uh, it, yeah, if it's used correctly, it, it can be beneficial, but often it is not. So that's why we don't do it. Uh, let me see. And in our mediums, we don't try, uh, again, we created this uh, Venetian medium in Italian varnish. It was not about drying time. It was just uh, follow specific idea. Uh, where, let's say, <clears throat> next uh, session I will show you epoxide oil gel and walnut oil gel, where that was the idea to speed up the, the drying time. But I will come, I, I will tell you pluses and minuses about uh, that mediums because it does bring certain um, way to, to apply and certain way to dry. And so, and so same as Olio Res Gel and Wilson's Medium. Again, Wilson's Medium was absolutely historical medium and George modified a little bit just again to be sane and uh, with what we now know and um, about drying time and how to change it in 
So, the... so Constance asks, what is the difference between the Italian and or Venetian for glazing versus balsam essential in the final layer? Okay, balsam essential, remember, it does have kind of the balsam and uh, which is basically elastif George, you will help me, elastifier. <laughs> so so the, it's never dry um, specifically how we talk about drying yeah. time. So it does give different, uh, very glossy appearance, but think it's about like this. So f that is fluid medium. There are no substance, no bodies there. So it's so it, it's it's going to be a very different, different. medium to use because it yeah. is as as you mentioned fluid, but not only that the resin which is Canada balsam changes the solubility of the paint film so yeah. it makes it more susceptible to cleaning to the action of varnishes or the solvents in varnishes so you have to keep that in mind it whereas it's much safer to use an oil only medium in throughout the painting much more problematic to use. Uh, oil or an oleoresinous medium such as Canada balsam and that's exactly why Merage is not you know is not an effective medium to use throughout the painting because it just makes the paint film susceptible to cleaning and also to a certain kind of drying cracks that can occur so it, you, if it's used judiciously, sparingly, it, it's if you really do know interesting. What, for specific yeah. areas where you absolutely need it. And whatever you do, remember, we always remind you. So, right on the back of your painting, what did you use? How did you use then when 50, 100 years later, restorers will come to, to clean your uh, paint or restore? They absolutely know what to do and what to use on your painting. Question, uh, do you have to take the same precautions with linseed oil thickened with lead strips as with lead white? And of course, with leaded glass in the Venetian medium. So uh, first of all, what? They're talking about safety. I, I imagine Jose is talking about safety precautions. So the strips are uh, in oil. So uh, you will see if you if you guys will do that. Uh, it's we always encourage you to do, you know, your all materials and your paint too. So, but um, so you will when you will put the, the strip in the oil. So uh, it, it's very interesting uh, reaction. You will see white and red particles where it will be. Uh, you know, again it. That's why in the bottle you you know you know when even if we cook the oil. So you will see uh, the particles of the lead. As long as you uh, don't have any cuts on your, uh, on your hands, uh, it's not penetrate through your uh, skin. But, but just keep in mind- Don't eat. So keep in mind, you do wanna use the same precaution uh, because there's trace amounts, there can be, and although we actually haven't measured it, uh, we it's it's actually below the the threshold of measuring, so it's trace amounts. Uh, but we just you know we put the warning on the label for for that's the sun thickened linseed oil made with uh, made with lead. We have now a sun thickened linseed oil that we made without lead. Yes. So and so and uh, now I'm reading. So yes, on Venetian medium, just think it's about. So first of all, black oil already cooked with lead. So the glass particles of um, the, you know, lead glass. So it's, it does have glass. I mean, the lead too. I mean, the the easiest part, just use the, the gloves. And that always we, we encourage an artist. And so don't be messy. So the key and, uh, is just handle it as you would like lead normal. white paint. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Looks like we're good. That's uh, all the questions, unless somebody else gets in a question at the last moment here. <laughs>
good. So that was great session. And so we love to follow you, um, your questions and your demands. That's uh, that's why we did uh, all that session about the different mediums. And so please stay uh, tuned until like the 25th of May. We will have another four medium uh, cover and we definitely will talk about um, uh, beautiful earth colors and transparency how easy to achieve and um thank you for being with us and um see you next time bye bye